All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo, and uh, last week Casey and I recorded for roughly an hour and forty five yeah, minutes. Yeah, about four and hours. We accidentally did that again. Um, did we? Really? We have a big show. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're about to. Um, we have a big show. <laughs> we it's the Dolphins Week for the AFC's crossover, so that will be the second portion of the show. We got a couple of things we got to do a little cleanup on with. Uh, what's been going on with the bills and then obviously talk about the preseason game. We're not going to get as in depth about the week one preseason game as other shows have, because at this point it's been about a week since you've watched the game. Um, But we do have to give our opinions on, you know, some, some things there. So real quick, Stefan Diggs knee hasn't practiced at this point in six days. Don't know if he'll be practicing by the time the show goes out or not. Are you worried about his knee at all? Like we have to ask the question. No, I'm not worried. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. I think it's one of those things where it's like, hey, let's get you some rest days. Like I, I generally believe that. Um, if it was something serious, I think, I think it would have been said, and he wouldn't be on the field and being a player coach. I think if it was serious, he would be more of rehabbing it, right? So that's that's the way I see it. So no, I'm not worried. That's fair. Yeah, I I'm not worried yet. I will say. I don't like that it's been a week. So no if it gets to it. the yeah, I like I, I always want to hear about how good he's doing in practice. So like I'm not worried about his knee long term or for the season at this point. I think if it goes another week where we don't see him in practice at that point, like you missed two weeks of practice, I'm like hold up now, like what what's going on? Like I don't like knee injuries. If it's like a, a finger issue or something, that they're just like, well, let's not have him mess up like a jammed finger or something that like. I, I, I don't care about that, but it's a knee injury. So the more time he misses, the more likely I am to be nervous. I'm not nervous yet, but I want him to come back to practice soon. Like, is, is that, that's a, I think that's a fair way. That's to fair. Play. That's yeah. fair. That's yeah. Fair. So Stefan Diggs, heal up so you can ball out in the regular season. Like just, we just want to see you on the field, dude. We miss um, you. Man. Yeah. We, we miss you, dude. We, we just want to see you out there balling. Um, Josh Allen has, in fact, been balling. Um, I think cool. was it. Next question. He <laughs> <laughs> was like 15 for 15, I think somebody said in practice. I, yeah. I think that was like all the reports. Yeah. Once again, today, because we record early, we don't record on Friday morning when it goes out. Um, so it's, it's not like anything is a surprise here. But I will say it's really good to hear that Josh Allen is continuing to have that sort of success while Stefan Diggs is not practicing. Like I that I think that gives me a lot of hope. Not just for the simple not just for the fact of like, oh Josh Allen is still good. More for like, oh, this offense, this passing offense can still be something special without its number one wide receiver. That's kind of where I'm at. And I know it's training camp. I know it's not all like you're a hundred percent the results you're gonna get, but I don't want to see Stefan Diggs being out and then Josh Allen not playing as well in practice. So I'm very happy that the timing of him playing really well, I like that we hear that right now. Yeah, it's better to hear, and of course I've been very vocal about, I don't care that Josh Allen is doing great in camp because it's camp he's supposed to. Like That's awesome that he's doing that. I've been very vocal about that. But I think it's better that we hear he's doing really good in camp than we hear that he's being heckled by a defensive back for being a check down. <laughs> I, I think that right there well, who, what, really who says does that a lot. happen to? I mean, I didn't no, but that wouldn't happen by anywhere, camp. right? Yeah, and that wouldn't happen anywhere. No. Absolutely not. But I think it's good. I think it's good that we're hearing like, hey, the defense is getting frustrated that he's just taking yeah. them out. And it's not necessarily long balls. It's, you know, quick passes and he's being very efficient with the ball. Like, that's awesome to hear. Um, but at the same time, like, good. Like, you're supposed to. Like, we expect yeah. that from a $258 million man. Um, so, yay, Josh Allen. Yes, it's it's all <laughs> just good. I'm glad to hear it. Like, let's keep moving yes. forward because we don't really need to. We don't really need to question it much. Like, yes, Josh Allen's yeah. doing good. Awesome. Cool. Love to hear awesome. it. Awesome. Um, did you just hear the train? There's a train that's going I by did. right now. Yep, you that's did. You a train. That, that yeah, was a train, yeah. everybody. Um, so, it next Ohio. thing, <laughs> Deion Dawkins. Yeah. That, I mean, that was unexpected to hear that he was in the hospital for four days. Yeah. I, that was – it was unexpected to hear that, and then it was pretty crazy to hear him being like, yeah, like, 
made me literally question if I was going to make it. And we don't have to get into the whole like actual yeah, I, COVID talk and everything, but I'm glad that he is healthy. I'm glad he recovered. Yes. And I'm glad that it sounds like Sean McDermott's comments from the, I think the previous day at the, at that point um, about Deion Dawkins not being ready to help the bills was more about the fact that like he, he physically just has to be in the right yes. shape and he's yeah. not there as opposed to like, Oh, he's, he's just not coming back. Like I'm much happier yeah. knowing that it's literally because he has to recover physically at this point, knowing that he is healthy now. I think when we hear that people are on the covert, uh, covert, covert, the COVID, on the covert list. <laughs> yeah. The COVID <laughs> reserve list. I think when we hear that, it's just like, okay, well, two weeks and they'll be back in. And the reason why I put it like that is because we're so jaded at this point. It's, it's so common um, in our society. Um, well, in, in the football world to just be like, Oh, he's on the COVID COVID reserve list and uh, he'll be out for two weeks and they'll do contact tracing and he'll be back in. Um, but to hear uh, Dion Dawkins be so candid about, Hey, I yeah. was in the hospital, you know, I was in the hospital. Um, I, you know, that stuff, that stuff's real. Um, but I think on the, on the, Hey, we're playing football, uh, get into the football talk. You gotta understand that your franchise left tackle, regardless of how you feel about COVID, regardless of how you feel about vaccinations or anything like that, your franchise left tackle lost a lot of weight and was in the mm-hmm. hospital, um, before the, you know, first week of, you know, the regular season. So that right there, that's, that's real, right? That that's a real thing. So, um, shout out to, you know, Dion for, you know, being so open about what was going on with him. Um, and hopefully he continues to progress and he, you know, continues to get healthy. I think that's very important, regardless of what you think about vaccinations, regardless of what you think about COVID is, Hey, let's get healthy and let's play ball. So, yeah. And he, I know he's from the sounds of it, he's practicing more and more every day. He's yes. doing a little bit more and more every day, which is obviously what you want to hear. Don't just throw him to the fire right away. It's there's not necessary. I will continue with my stance of as long as Deion Dawkins is not playing, I do not want to see Josh Allen out on the field. And this is kind of the perfect transition to winners and losers from week one of preseason. I'll give mine real quick and then you can do yours because um, as we talked about, I was driving into New York during the game for a family vacation. Timing just didn't work out real well for me. Not a true fan. Not a true fan. I was able to catch some of the game, actually a large majority of it. I definitely caught more of the game than I should have. Um, but winner of the game, in my opinion, was, and this is going to be a real chalk pick, so I'm sorry, but like from like the, what I noticed, like the guy who really stood out was Marquez Stevenson. I did not expect him to make as many plays as he did. I'm, I didn't. I, I'm glad that he did, though. I liked that he made those plays. Not just because, like, oh, the, cool, the Bills won. I don't care if the Bills win a preseason game. That doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys on Facebook or Twitter who's like, oh, my goodness, McDermott needs to be on the hot seat because he didn't coach <laughs> as well in the preseason. And maybe Fire. we need to give Trubisky a shot at the starting job, give him a real chance here. Like, I'm not yeah. going to be one of those guys because, oh, there were some of those. But like, Yeah, in my comments on Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, I don't, I don't care about that. I like that I saw him play well. I will say it was it was good to see all of the rookies out there. But the offensive line is the offensive line depth, I'm going to say is the loser of the preseason game because outside of the starters, I am I am nervous. And this is not going to be anything new that people are hearing. Yeah. Like we don't have any reliable tackle depth right now. If Daryl Williams or Deion Dawkins are not good to go any week during the regular season and the Bills have to roll out one of the guys they have right now, they're, it's not going to be good. Spencer Brown was good in the, the run game, not real good in pass protection. Needs a lot of work. So- He's raw. We knew that. But winner for me, Marquez Stevenson, loser, offensive line. Where were you at? So- Give me a more in-depth look because, you know. Yeah, I, so I, I went driving. back – I, uh, my in-laws were over when the game was going on. Um, and I, Excuses, I was saying, that's all I hear. No, 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 no. I was <laughs> watching 
game and they were taking care of my daughter and all that good stuff. And then like about halftime came and I was like, you know what? I've got game pass. I can, I can catch this game later. I'm really exhausted because once again, I haven't been born. And I was like, let me get some sleep. So I go to get some sleep and all of a sudden my, my daughter starts screaming. So I didn't get any sleep and I, I went to take care of my daughter. Um, and then I went back and I rewatched the game because there was a lot of people who were actually coming at Spencer Brown like pretty heavily, right? And I was like, dude, I want to see this, right? And I remember texting Kendall, our producer, and saying, dude, like what's up with all this hate for Spencer Brown, right? Because when Biscay was in, there were two pass plays. The majority of it was run, right? And as I was watching him, I was like, I'm not seeing like anything where I was like, I hate Spencer Brown, which is what I was seeing in a lot of the comments. And then <laughs> – it's funny after I texted Kendall and was like, I don't get all the hate. Was it just overblown? You know what I'm saying? Uh, the next play um, I said, Oh, okay. Well, there it is. Right. <laughs> speed. Kills, <laughs> speed kills Spencer oh. Brown, which I, I wonder what I, what I actually said to him. Um, but it, anyway, speed kills Spencer Brown. We, we knew that, right? Like that was a big thing. Um, we, we knew that and it was coming. Um, here it is right here. I said, uh, I said, oh, okay, speed moves are killing him, but we knew that, LOL. So he's getting beat. He was getting beat off the edge by them using a, a, a speed move, right? Um, he wasn't trusting his feet. His shoulders were getting out of whack, um, and he was just letting people get right by him, right? And a couple times that made, you know, Webb flush out of the pocket, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when, when that happened, when he was getting frustrated – uh, of somebody actually getting around him, he starts to grab. He starts to grab. There was a play um, just fresh in my mind was the uh, grounding penalty that Webb had. Um, that was all Spencer Brown's fault, <laughs> like 100%. He got beat. He tried to grab him. Webb had nowhere to go. He had to throw the ball down to the ground. There was another play where um, he got flushed from the pocket, and uh, it, that was Spencer Brown's fault again, and Webb had to throw it um, pretty – just throw it away because that was Brown's fault. Um, and it, it's frustrating. And I even told Kendall that I said, it's frustrating to watch him do mm-hmm. that. Um, it was frustrating. So, so just to put it lightly, it was frustrating to see him hold So going into the second preseason game. I like to see him just kind of trust his technique and not to see it just get thrown mm-hmm. out the window when somebody beats you with a, with a speed move. I think uh, when I first started actually scouting him, uh, one of the things that I said was, you're not going to push him around. You're not going to beat him with a power rush, bull rush, um, but speed kills him. Right. Yeah. So coming into the first preseason game, what did they do? Just speed. Speed was killing them. And they knew it too. They were attacking him. Um, so that kind of sucked. Um, so outside, so you're, you're winner and loser though. Let's, let's get that. And then we can, I think I, there's one specific topic we kind of have to talk. We about, have to, but we have yeah. to talk about it and, and I'm trying to hurry. Um, but I think Spencer Brown is a loser just because there's high <laughs> hopes for him. I know that's not that's that's not a bad. <laughs> There's high hopes for him, and it breaks my heart to say he's a loo- he's he he's was the loser, loser of the season week. game. You, you don't uh, have to of say the he's week. a loser. Yeah. You could just say he was um, the loser from. You're a loser. <laughs> you break my heart. How dare you? Uh, no, it just that's why it, that's why he never got back week, to you. I yeah exactly. I I think. Uh, I think he can improve a lot, and I think we will see him improve a lot in the second preseason game. Um, I think it says a lot that he played, um, I think, into the third, and that was it. He, he kind of got pulled. Something that says a lot about the coaching staff. It uh, probably also says that they want to see other linemen other than him. Um, but I think he kind of turns around um, come the second game. Now, my winner um, is actually uh, Brandon Bryant, I think is his name. Love that um, pick, yeah. Defensive tackle. Um, my my God. Um, oh, can I have two, Kyle? Can I have two? Because as I'm watching the game, go ahead, dude. Dude, as I'm as I'm watching the game, uh, I, I was like, I'm gonna rewatch this and start focusing on other people outside of Spencer Brown. And then a couple people just kept catching my eye. Uh, one of them was was Brian on the defensive line. That dude was making plays. Like I I was not specifically looking at him, but he just kept flashing. He kept flashing. Now he kind of fell off. As the game went on, right, like kind of, he got a little bit tired. But my God, he was he was flashing for me. So I, I love him. Um, and then McLeod, like that dude, like outside of the uh, he didn't catch the pick six and ran back the ball and blah blah. Outside of, of that play, um, if you just watch him, like he was all over the field. He was making really good plays. He was locking folks down. Like that guy was what 
Wild Goose was supposed to be for Bill's Mafia, but it's McLeod. So for everybody who is, is a big Wild Goose, by the way, he got torched. <laughs> Absolutely torched the whole game. Um, so for everybody who's like, I love Wild Goose, if you want to just cash in your Wild Goose tickets and pick up all the McLeod hype, you can do that. I will allow you to do that. Um, so McLeod and Bryant were just absolutely – like, I, I love them. They'll be practice squad players for sure. Um, and I want to go as far as to say that um, McLeod actually – yeah, I'll say it. I think McLeod has a good chance of, of making the team um, and stealing somebody's spot. Okay. <clears throat> Not bad. So who – all right. So before we do the three players we're looking into, we could do that real quick at the end. But we have to talk about Kumaro. Do you want do you want to give actually here? I'm gonna give my thoughts on this first and then I'll yeah. let you run with it after. So we yeah. talked last week about Kumaro and how we wanted to see him do something. We wanted to see him make an impact in the game outside of special teams, see what he could actually do at wide receiver. We didn't want to hear the excuses of oh well it wasn't Josh Allen throwing him the ball. I I'm gonna give him a pass for this week. Because it's yeah. not that it was not Josh Allen throwing him the ball. It's that they weren't throwing the ball. When yeah. he was in, it was just run, 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 run. They, they only threw the ball, what, twice? Like, yeah. You're not going to see much from the wide receivers. And I think that's more because they're, they're more worried about the running backs and getting them yeah. going and seeing what they can do. But they got to figure out what's going on at wide receiver six. They're going to have to, if they want him to be on the roster – I want to see what he can do at wide receiver also. I know wide receiver six doesn't play all that often. I know it's mainly to bring someone on for another role and just to be that backup guy. But I still want to see a reason. So that's where I'm at. I give him a pass for last week. However, when his opportunity comes, I I agree with you. I don't care who's throwing him the ball. I want to see him still be able to make a play. But I, I give him a pass for not really seeing him out on the field as like, a, oh, he's out there making stuff happen. I don't care about that from last week. He's he's growing on me. Um, oh. He is. I mean, the, <laughs> one, of the reasons, one of the reasons why I was like, like I guess anti Kumaro, which I'm I'm not. By the way, before Kyle clips this and puts it on Twitter, I'm not anti Kumaro. You are anti Twitter Kumaro. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm anti. Yeah, and I've I've said it so many times. Like he should not make the team just based off Aaron Rodgers liking him. Like that's the dumbest thing in the world for somebody to make a team. Like I don't care what another quarter. I don't care. I don't care what any quarterback says about the wide receiver unless it's our quarterback. Um, and of course, Josh Allen is very glowing about him. Um, but he is making play. He is making plays in practice, and that's important. But I do want to see what he does during the game. And that's one person that I'm very excited to see, just because it's like, hey, it, are you are you just about the practice, or can mm-hmm. you translate to the game, right? Um, and people will say, well, he has. He has translated to the game. Um, he's played a couple of regular season games. And that's all fine and dandy, but I don't care. Like, I want to see yeah. what can you do. Like, I I want to see that. Um, so I'm interested in see how he does it. Um, if he makes the roster, which at this point, Hodgins has a, a, a knee injury. So him making the roster um, is actually looking it really feels, good. It feels um, more like a two-man race, yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it feels it feels like he's going to make the roster, which is fine if he does. I just want him to legitimately make the roster. And if you're a Bills fan and you're saying, um, like, and, and I say, why Kumro? And you say, Aaron Rodgers likes him or touchdown Jesus. I'm going to say that's not a valid reason. Like, I want a legit reason of why he should make this team. And if it's special teams, I want to see him perform on special teams, which is why preseason games to me are very important. So that's my take on Kumro. All right, yeah, cool. I'm I, I'm with you on that, um, but I was I, I will say I'm surprised that he is growing on you. But yeah, so he's growing do you on wanna, me. Do you want to do your three players you're looking forward to watching this week, or do you want me to do that first? You can go ahead and go first. All right. So, first player that I'm looking forward to watching is going to be a repeat from last week. Um, That's it fun. is Antonio Williams, and I'm going to put a star next to it of as long as he plays, because I know he had a stinger. He did come back into the game. As long as he's playing, he is the guy that I'm looking forward to watching because I've said it before. I think he can 
have an impact on this roster, but he has to have a huge bounce back from last week because I know he got a stinger on the play, but you can't have a fumble. Can't do that. So how is he going to bounce back from that? Because despite him having a fumble, Matt Breda did not really separate himself all that much, like almost at all. I still I think Matt Breda has the edge right now if it's only going to be one of them. But Antonio Williams could definitely still make a case for himself being on the roster over Matt Breda if he plays well. He has the opportunity. So I want to see how he can bounce back from that because he's not a guy who's had a whole lot of fumbles during his career. Maybe he could have used like a, his sixth finger on that play. That probably would have been a little helpful. Maybe he wouldn't have lost yeah. the ball. You know, yeah. maybe. But like, I want to see how he bounces back from that mistake, from that bad moment. Can he make something happen? He's the first guy. Next guy I'm, I want to see and I want to really watch is Efe Obata. And it's because he like surprised me. I, I know there's yeah. been a lot of good reports about him in camp. But I was still when, when I was able to watch the game, I was still like, yo, like he is out there making plays. Yeah. Like, I want to see him get runs against some starters and see what he can do consistently. Cause I want to see can he be a guy who comes in and makes an impact for the Bills during the regular season? Like, not just can he make the roster, but he seemed like he could potentially be a guy who actually cracks that defensive end rotation. Yeah. And I mean, I know he had the penalty. And it, it was kind of a BS penalty. Uh, like it was, a, it was a low penalty. Whatever. I think those are the way they call that. I get it, but the way it was on that play, like that, whatever. I, I thought that was a little BS. But he is out there making plays, so I want to see that happen. I want to see him just continue doing that because I think he could be really good for this team with his ability to play inside and out. And then the last guy is Josh Thomas, safety undrafted guy which i i always root for the undrafted guys i want to see undrafted guys succeed he just seemed like he was around the ball yeah and like that it's it's really cool when you see a guy who is that underdog and then you go like when the game actually starts and you, you heard about him in practice like it sounded like he was making plays in practice he was running with the twos in practice but you want to see did he do it in the game cool he did it yeah. one week I want to see him do it two weeks. I want to see him do it three weeks. I want to see him do it consistently throughout the rest of the preseason because Josh Thomas has now put himself in a real position to go from an undrafted guy to a rostered football player in the NFL for a team that is a Super Bowl contender. And that's huge. That's crazy. That's a huge come up. So I'm really watching him because if he can keep going the way he is, he could definitely make this roster, which is crazy for an undrafted guy to say, with how deep this roster is. Yeah. Um, my guys are Nick McLeod for the same reason that um, uh, um, you have is because I want to see him do, um, you know, week in, week out, right? Mm-hmm. I personally do think he, he can make this roster um, over some of the other people that we have on the roster uh, at the cornerback position. Uh, but I want to see him be consistent. And I'd honestly like to see him get into the game a little bit early so I can see him get some – uh, better competition, see how he pulls up. But I love his swagger. Like, that dude is I, – I love watching him play. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to be keeping an eye out on Spencer Brown, um, basically because I want to see, does he cut down the uh, the holding? Uh, he didn't have – I don't think he had any holding penalties, but just cutting down on the holding. Um, and then – Kumaro was going to be my next one, but I think that's just a given on, on, yeah. on Kumaro. Um out, outside of those guys, there's not really another one besides can, I mean, Antonio we just, Williams. We could put I, Kumaro I, on the list so we don't double up. I'm fine with that. We, we, I'm not yeah. worried about – yeah. If he's the guy that I, you I, really want to watch, I only wanted to avoid saying him last week because the wide receiver six discussion, yeah. like some, we were going to put that in. But if you yeah. want him in this week, he's your guy. He's your guy. Let's, like, let's yeah. just make that part of your list. Because at the end of the day, I, I got to know, like, what are you what are you going to do? What are you going to bring to this team? Are you going to perform in preseason? And I, I think that's important. Um, it's preseason. I get it. Whatever. Are you going to perform? Um, so Kumro is probably the other person that I'm really going to be looking at. Uh, but obviously, Spencer Brown and McLeod. God, McLeod. If you, if you <laughs> haven't, like, looked at McLeod, go back and rewatch that preseason game um, and just kind of really pay attention to McLeod outside of the pick six um, and all that other stuff because that's probably the one kind of um, – 
play that everybody knows McLeod for. But there was another one. I think they went for two. Um, McLeod, once again, pass breakup. Like, dude is just, oh, oh my goodness. Um, so, yeah, those are my three. Yeah, I, I like you putting McLeod on there and honestly just talking up McLeod because he deserves it. Um, and we, so we, we talked about this a little bit with Kevin. The CB2 spot, there's question marks there. Levi Wallace is going to win the job. It, we, I, I'm not, I'm not even scared to say that. Like he's just going to win the job. Yeah. But what's going on behind him makes me more nervous than Levi Wallace being at CB2 because Dane Jackson, the supposed All Pro according to like Bills Mafia on Twitter, he was not great. I'm not saying he was terrible during the preseason game, but he was not great. And I, that was not against like starting caliber guys yeah. who should be like number one, number two wide receivers. So didn't love seeing that. And then you mentioned Wild Goose was getting cooked. So like, yeah, there's there's potential that a guy who's farther down on the depth chart right now, if they put together a good preseason and then they put together a good training camp within that preseason, there's a potential we could see an unexpected name on the cornerback list. Yeah, and I think so, McLeod's the guy. I think, I think they found a, a gem in him. I said it. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna wrap this all up. We once again, we just put ourselves in a position where we just got, went way too long. Hopefully, way too the show long. next week is um, not as long. But it's a great interview with Kevin. A lot of good discussions. Kevin and I got into it a little bit about two at the beginning. So <laughs> enjoy that. Um, but we will turn it over now to the interview with Kevin and the AFC East crossover series. All right, let's welcome on our special guest of the week. Uh, this is Dolphins week of the AFC East crossover. Uh, we have Kevin Gerard from he's the Dolphins fan within Buffalo Fanatics, I guess would be the best way to put it right, Kevin, that. Do you want a different title than that, or is there a resident Dolphins fan? Anything, anything specific you want? No, that's good enough. You know, like I said, I just hang out with you guys, and every now and then someone throws me an invite. <laughs> uh, 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 emphasis on special um, on the show. Emphasis on special. Mm-hmm. You're a very special boy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Casey's starting off hot right now. Remember that time? What did Nap say? Remember he threw me under a bus, Casey, and you had to come to my rescue? Dude, did I do like that? Nap, oh, Nap, Nap when, talk, when did I do that? Nap talked shit about you one time, and I, I, I had to that. stop the show. I had to stop the show. I had to say, listen here, you're not going to do my boy Kev like that. Yeah, so. Some guy or something. Remember he said some Bills fan or some <laughs> Dolphins fan. Remember that? Thank oh, you. we're we're gonna. All right, I remember where we're going with this now. We're we're just gonna completely change the story here, even though there's there's tape of it. There's no story to, you know. I believe reverse. what I said was he is a Bills fan within, or he is a Dolphins fan within Buffalo Fanatics, and Casey just decided to run with a random oh, Dolphins yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I said, specifically said you are Rico's friend and that you're yeah, a Dolphins yeah, fan just resides yeah, within. Yeah, yeah, and Casey's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, Kyle just said, yeah, like, oh, yeah. he's just this random this random yeah, Dolphins random fan. Yeah. It's just Casey, some dude met at a bus station. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much, yeah. right? Right? He said, just, uh, that's, uh, that's Rico's friend. I was like, okay, well, I don't have my friends on here. Kev is special, all right? Like, let's chill out. <laughs> all right, so now that, are you guys good? This, you guys got you got your this, ribbon of me out now, or do you want to go a little bit this more? This show, this show is starting off just flaming. Oh, we're starting like, it's, off hot. It's, it's hot. It's hot. Um, let's talk some dolphins and bills, it's, and that is we what we talk about. Call, how the bills go dolphin hunting twice a year. Has been lately. I mean, it's been pretty bad. The main thing I want to talk about, though, Kev, is I want to know your thoughts on Tua. Because there are some people in Bill's Mafia that shit on Tua. And it's being very polite. They shit on him. Uh, But there's a couple other people like um, Sports Rock. um, That's Ryan Sullivan, for those who don't know. 585 Report, they're awesome. Um, Ryan is a big fan of Tua. Ryan's one of those people who's like, hey, you need to back off. Remember, Josh Allen was the same way. Josh Allen this, Josh Allen that. Um, yeah, keep in mind, Josh Allen was much worse as a rookie. Yes, like, yes. Statistically much worse. So so talk to me about Tua. 
because I have not been keeping up with Dolphins camp. I have no idea if he's throwing four or five interceptions or if, you know, he just doesn't have the velocity on the ball to squeeze it into double coverage like some quarterbacks we know. But just talk me through how Tua is doing in this camp. We, we could even frame it like this because I'm definitely in the camp of like, I don't really believe in Tua. Um, I think I he really is. Care. <laughs> I think he is a serviceable quarterback, and that's probably the, the best that you can get out of him. I look at him and I think Tyrod Taylor type of ceiling where you're never really going to take it. You're never really going to get the guy who's like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to win the game for you. He's just going to do what – he's, he's going to be average, really. So that, that's where I am with him, and that's not even just from what I see from what I've seen from him with Miami – I've always thought that of him. I've never really been very high on Tua. So we can even frame this as like, sell me on Tua. Why should I believe in him? Because I I don't. Well, it's going to be hard because I, I wouldn't really buy it myself. Um, <laughs> I don't think that. I think he's definitely, he's better than bums like Tyrod. Or let me rephrase. He has the well, potential I, to be better than bums. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Tyrod yeah. is your is your 20th uh, t- bottom 20 QB. If from what I've seen so far with Tua, if he ex- hits all of the levels he could possibly hit, I see him as a Matt Ryan kind of guy. Okay. Um, well, that's not bad. No, no, that's not bad. You know, I, I don't think he's ever going to hit like where Allen hit last year. I don't think he's ever going to be as bad as Allen was his first couple of years. He's like in the middle, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think he's going to be a superstar. I think I was nodding with you when you said serviceable because I was thinking like, you know, prime uh, Kirk Cousins, like maybe he climbs into that, uh, you know, not same caliber like arms talent wise, but the same like level of quarterback play as say like a Matt Stafford, you know, I mean, one of those guys, I think that he could be uh, a fringe top 10 guy like you know somewhere between 12 and 8 if if everything comes through um what he does have that he gets knocked for which is weird is they always say he's not mobile but i don't get that uh, yeah that's just that's not true he's actually quite mobile he's <laughs> yeah. not gonna run he's not a four or five guy he's not gonna like um you know challenge guys like justin fields is gonna do but he's um even last year he was uh him and josh allen were one and two for evasion in the pocket um he can sidestep. He can move. He has elite accuracy. Um, everyone talks about it. This year, do you want do you like? Do you really want me to throw gas in the fire? This like is, I this just, is I just want you to be honest. I want you to be honest. Yeah, I want you to be honest. So my honest, uh, my honest thoughts on him right now is he wasn't as bad as Bills fans make him out to be last year. That is pure paranoia because. You guys, and I speak from a losing team for a long time, right? Dolphins and Bills have not had much success in the last 25 years. You guys have done well the last couple of years, but I mean prior to that, right? You had 600-year span without a playoff win or something like that. And now That's Miami's fair. got like – Understatement. Seven, and, and Miami's got – is right there with you now, right? So like this isn't shitting on you. I it's This is like I understand. And I almost feel like Bills fans got that taste of winning. And the Patriots were crumbling. The Jets were abysmal. And Miami was supposed to not be very good. And they kind of came out of nowhere, overachieved for the second year in a row, won 10 games. There was a bit of a, are they going to win the, make the playoffs kind of thing. And I think Bills fans just took this opportunity to just dump on, on Tua because you guys, um, well, a lot of, I'm not speaking you specifically, but a lot of. I was about to say, I was about to say. A lot of the guys guys on Twitter, right? It's like you, they talk very confidently, but it's almost like there's this weird fear that just as you guys have built a solid winner, some act of God's going to take it away or something like that. So you've just been dumping. Plus everyone dumped on Allen for two years, right? And you guys uh, held out hope, you guys, again, being the fan base, held out hope and saw your <laughs> flashes and saw this, and you you believed, right, when no one else did. And and now you want to rewrite history and want to talk about, oh, see, you guys didn't know what you were talking about, when the reality is, is he took a crazy, unparalleled, unforeseen jump and played nothing like he did in the last two years and took that. But I think the two years of crap you took is now you guys have snowballed it and you're going to shit on, on Tua. 
and keep him. And you're already started with Zach Wilson. Wilson has has played one preseason hey, game. Hey, 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 you calm it down over there, because here on the Nap Nose Buffalo, we are big supporters of Zach Wilson and his mother. So you, you calm it down over there. <laughs> I'm a big fan of his one more than the other. One more than the other. <laughs> one more than the other. What I would sum up with Tua is he wasn't as bad as made out to be. His touchdown interception ratio was good. He all they ever hear is oh they kept pulling him for Ryan Fitzpatrick, kept pulling him for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Do you know how many games Ryan Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick won coming in for Tua? One. He won one. But, but doesn't Ryan, shouldn't that matter though? I mean, like honestly, like the fact that they didn't have the confidence to keep him in the game, like if they if they're worried about him playing to the end of that game and it not going well and that potentially breaking his confidence. If they're worried about that and that like they clearly were worried about something and that's why they pulled him. Well, Should, isn't that con- like, that's concerning if he's, I, if that's going to break him by losing a couple of games because he didn't play well towards the end, then he's not the guy. If that breaks him. That's exactly my point though, is that um, it was a kind of a unique situation. Most quarterbacks, when they come in, whether you want to take Allen or Herbert or whatever, the high ones, they got picked high because they're on a crap team, right? Miami got that pick because they had uh, the Laramie Tunsil trade. Mm-hmm. So often when you come in, think back to Allen's rookie year. You guys were not competing for anything. You weren't up for the playoffs. You, had, you were buried at the playoffs. There was zero hope. So there, what would be the purpose in benching Josh Allen? What, what were you going to do? Why? It made sense. He was your future, your franchise. I'm not shitting on him or the team. I'm just saying it was smart at the time. Keep him in the game. Let him play. Let him take his lumps. Let him go through those like Green Bay games, the Tennessee game, the five turnover game against the Patriots. You know, like let him take his lumps. Miami was had won, had, a, had won 10 games. Like they had a chance to make the playoffs for the first time. And you guys know how how – Sweet is it every time to make the playoffs when we've gone like 20 years with, 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 well, that's what I'm saying, right? So you're going to, you're going to, you're pulling him because you're trying to win. And the mentality is, is pulling him those two times uh, is going to crush his confidence for the future. Then you're absolutely right. He isn't the quarterback. And the so why, got, why play him at all if you're not willing to play him when it matters? They didn't play him because they thought it was for the future. They played him last year because people forget Fitzpatrick, when he got pulled, just played against the Jets and, and almost threw like four picks, and they, and they didn't play that well. So he had a couple of good games against the 49ers and the, uh, and the Jags, and he played pretty very poorly against the Pats. He didn't play that well against the Seahawks. He had to play decent against you guys, but this was a very Fitzpatrick-type season where he was up, down, up, down. Meanwhile, Miami's defense was playing very well last year, finished sixth overall, and they had this formula where Tua wasn't going to turn over the ball. They were going to win through defense, special teams, and they thought the ceiling with Tua was higher or a better than what the risk of Fitz, uh, tr- Fitz tragic. So that's why they did it. They didn't cash in the season like, like the Chargers did. They didn't cash in the season like the like when, when Allen got inserted because that the whole purpose of that season for that team was nothing more than preparing the quarterback for the future. The Dolphins, whether you think it's right or wrong, uh, was trying to win now and – have their cake and eat it too and see if they can get to it in to elevate the team. Yeah. I mean, I I get all of that. I I think it's, it's just a, it's, it's a weird, it's, I think it's making excuses for it, honestly, to to say that to how many other teams with young quarterbacks have won 10 games. I I don't have that right off the top of my head. Pittsburgh. So so here's, here's the thing you, you specifically said something that, that, kind of was my exact reason for why I think that he is Tyrod Taylor in, in a sense, obviously like not exactly the same, but Mm -hmm. kind of that style of quarterback, that type of quarterback you said they win games because of their defense and their special teams, not because of Tua. That's a, that's kind of the exact reason. Like he's he's never going to be the guy who goes out and wins wins the game game because of Josh Allen in his rookie year. Oh, that's we're we're not talking about Josh Allen right now, but also I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure they did because won, Josh Allen actually won, did throw won six games a, the whole year. 
Yeah, they, I, I didn't say they won a lot of games. <laughs> well, that's my I didn't point. say that. That's my what point. I'm, but what I'm saying, though, what I'm saying, though, is that he, he played enough and then got pulled when it mattered because they didn't believe in him to win. Like that's, that's that everything you're saying, everything you're saying. I get the, the general <laughs> gist of it of like, let's try and have our cake and eat it, too. But if you really believe in the guy, you're just going to have you're just going to do one because they don't that, really yeah. believe in the guy. Oh, it's it's bullshit. very clear no, to, to pull him. Then to pull him when the game is on the line. You don't believe on a guy one you don't believe against him. Kansas City. I know it's tough to believe because you guys blew out twice, but it is possible to have a quarterback play well against Kansas City. It happened. Why leave him in? So why leave him in there? Why leave him in all the other games? That why he pull him on the other games? Why pull him on the other? Like, you they can have the same conversation both them, ways. So they pulled him against D- Denver because Fangio's defense completely had him overmatched. He was completely. They didn't bottled. believe in him in that game. <laughs> they didn't believe it, it was a situational court. thing. It was a situational thing. I'm not saying they didn't believe in him at all. They clearly yeah. did if they played him. What I'm saying is it's, it's very odd to say this is our franchise quarterback. This is the guy we believe in. But then go ahead, and when there's a game on the line, not every single time, but when there's a game on the line, you pull him. That's just a weird thing. That's that's all I'm saying. I And once again, I don't hate Tua. I yeah. don't really believe in him myself, but I think he is going to be a serviceable quarterback who can go out and win games. He could get the Dolphins to the playoffs as long as the rest of the team, the defense specifically, is playing as well as they did last year. But if the defense drops off, my faith in Tua as a quarterback really kind of falls at that point because I think he needs to be supported by the defense and have that kind of comfortability of like, even if this drive doesn't go well, we're going to be okay. So that's that's kind of where I'm at on him. I, and like, it's not me trying to talk down on him or anything. Like, I just don't, I haven't seen that quote unquote it factor. And you keep referencing Josh Allen in his rookie year. He didn't, he was not statistically great. Like, I'm not trying to argue that, but I think in his rookie year, you saw multiple moments where it was like that it factor. This guy's a gamer. This guy, he just goes out, he's, he's willing to fight. You are rewriting history, my friend. I I said moments. I did not say a season. And once again, this is, so I I feel like there's a little bit of salt because he's five and one against the Dolphins and he has destroyed the Dolphins. Every single time. There's zero salt. The only reason I bring up Allen is because salt. it's a Bills podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Bills podcast. So, I think we could go in circles here. Then, yeah, <laughs> okay, so okay. So, let, let me so, just one, one more thing. You, so, you, one more I thing and that's that, it, I get that, yeah. so I get that. So if we want to talk Allen, right, there were moments, but there were also a ton of just absolute shit moments where you were just like, what is this guy doing? Whereas Tua has been a little bit more even. He has had fewer flashes other than the Arizona game or the Kansas City game. Uh, Didn't take him three years to get 300 yards, but whatever. Uh, But there's been fewer, like, really low lows. Really low lows. Anyways, I could have used Herbert or something. I probably should have. It would have invoked less emotion. I think think, think it's it's fair to use Allen in this sense. I think Allen, obviously, is very clearly a low floor really high ceiling. I just see Tua as like a middle, middle-ish kind of he, – he's not going to get like a whole lot better. He's never going to be like really terrible, but it, I, I just – I don't ever see myself being impressed, if that makes maybe, sense. Maybe that maybe it's because we have different views on Tyrod. What about – So you know, I, didn't, I didn't love Tyrod. Oh, the end even, of is that your level? Like <laughs> – Speaking of yeah. the uh, speaking of Tua and the quarterback, right here recently, <laughs> Miami. Like, get me out of here. <laughs> look, I want to go to sleep tonight. I don't think y'all understand. Like, I want to go to sleep tonight. We can talk about Josh Allen and Tua, and Kevin could get the last word, and then Kyle can get the last word. We we can do this all day long. But the real important question is: is here recently? I think yesterday or today. The days just kind of run together. Miami made a big time trade for an offensive tackle. And I believe it was Greg Little. Uh, you you can you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Big Talk, time trade. Walk, <laughs> walk, walk me through walk me through how the O line how that kind of stacks up with Tua back there. Tua is going into the sophomore year. You want to see him take that one more jump, right? How is he going to take that jump if your you know your offensive line is shaky? So is it shaky? Should we worry about the? I mean, especially with the defensive front that we have coming, hopefully have coming. 
do you have a pass rush? Anyways. Well, that's um, what I'm saying. Hopefully, and I put quotation marks. Don't you come at me. You come at him over there in the corner. <laughs> uh, Point the right way, Casey. Come on. So I can't. Yeah. So basically, you should be concerned about the O-line. I don't know about a big-time trade. They gave up a seventh rounder. That's but, big time. Uh, Basically, what happened is they had uh, DJ Fluker, and DJ Fluker, like as their back, one of the backup tackles, he got hurt. He's out. He's on IR. So they uh, they waived him with an injury settlement. So they traded for little because they wanted some sort of insurance. What I personally think is that he's probably insurance in case Eichenberg isn't ready to take the right tackle role. But you should be worried about the O line because the O line's crazy young, right? They have they yeah. spent a first round pick last year on Austin Jackson, so he's going in his second year. Yep. They drafted Solomon Kinley at left guard last year, so he's going in his second year. They currently have Michael Dieters slated to start at center. He's in his third year. They have Robert Hunt at right guard. He's in his second year, and they're hoping to put Eichenberg at right tackle. So although Eichenberg's taking snaps at left guard, right tackle, all over, but ultimately I think they hope he takes that right tackle role. So you should be very concerned about Miami's front, and Buffalo could cause some serious problems because you've got a ton of like second-year players and, and a rookie out there. So they, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. You know, let's let's uh, let's just go crazy and pretend that it's not the preseason and just overhype everything right now. Gregory Russo looked pretty good um, in the preseason game. You know, the, the few snaps that he got, he looked good. And let it be known for everybody out there listening on the podcast and way to work, making an omelet, or just watching on YouTube, that I said Gregory Russo was going to be a first-round uh, draft pick, and Knapp said, no, he's not. So, Point the wrong moving way on, I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> moving on, are you nervous watching Gregory Russo go out there and just do his thing, right? And have AJ Epinesa, who, by the way, has has you know really grown into his role. Are you worried about Buffalo's so called pass rush that could could happen this season with that young offensive line? Does that scare you? Mm, I always liked Russo. Obviously, I'm a Miami fan, so yeah, big Miami guy. So he's I, I love Russo. Um, I got the other one right. I got Jalen Phillips. So yeah, I was yeah, happy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was happy to see. Uh, I was happy to see both of them get drafted. I like both of them. Russo uh, was like a wide receiver in, in high school. And then he uh, got put in. Uh, they switched him to DE and Hurricanes. And he played in the uh, freshman, you know, like the uh, the, pre- the spring game. And yeah. He got something like six sacks. Yeah. And everyone was just like, oh, this guy's going to be a monster. He comes, gets hurt, comes back the next year, sophomore year, and uh, he tears it up. So I loved Gregory Russo. Um I probably would have put him in a different scheme than yours, but um, I I think he's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of untapped potential. I think he caused some big problems. Um, I definitely – you could throw anyone out there, and I'm going to be concerned with my O-line right now because none of them have any experience. Gotcha. I mean, you hope that they take a jump from year one to two, just like because most players do. You hope a yeah, couple of yeah. them take like a significant jump and turn into being good players. Um, but realistically, maybe one of them does. My money would be on Robert Hunt. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very concerned. I mean, Ed Oliver is going to be, is, should be a bit better this year. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's, there's, you know, you still have old man Hughes and Addison. Um, so yeah, I think the main thing too is that you're, you're, your back seven is so talented that it's going to force QBs to hold on to the ball. And I think your pass rush is going to, you know, has a chance to look, you know, slightly better than maybe it would be because that back seven is, is going to force quarterbacks to hold on to the ball and take that extra second or two. And it's going to let your guys get there. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely worried in that regard. It's almost with the, with the offensive line versus the bills defensive line. It's almost like which team is going to take that jump first because the bills defensive line, I mean, you mentioned it, it wasn't, we didn't have the best pass rush last year. Everybody kind of knows that. That's why they put so much into spent like so much spending uh, two seasons ago in free agency, and then obviously the first three draft picks of the last two seasons have been on defensive ends. Um, so it, it's kind of yeah. I mean, if the Bills' defensive line takes that jump and gets to the next level before the Dolphins' offensive line does. I think there's plenty to be worried about in terms of the Dolphins offensive line play and the Bills getting to Tua 
and then obviously other teams, whatever. Like you, you have to be worried about any team that has a good pass rush. But if the Dolphins' offensive line can take that jump, it's much less of a big deal at that point because then they're kind of going potentially in lockstep with how the Bills' defensive line progresses. I think that would probably be the hope for a, a Dolphins fan. Yeah, I mean, we got a first rounder, a second rounder, a second rounder, a third rounder, and a fourth rounder on in the last like three years on that line. So hopefully, like they pan out. I mean, I, I always joke that like Brandon Bean's been awesome, but he struggled with the defensive line, and Chris yeah. Rick's done really well with the um, with the re- right taking this team from nothing to you know ten wins last year. He's done pretty well his last two years, but man, he can't hit on the O line. So it's like their two Achilles uh, heels, if you will, kind of match up. So it's whoever fixes, uh, you know, fixes that first is going to have a huge advantage um, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting to watch during the matchups because I mean, it, it could really go any way. But if you win the line of scrimmage, you're going to have a huge advantage during the game. So uh, we kind of mentioned free agency just quickly that the Bills spent a lot in free agency. I want to talk Dolphins free agency. Um, that kind of a two-parter, I guess. Are you nervous that some of the larger contracts that the Dolphins handed out last offseason were moved this offseason because they didn't really pan out the, the way you wanted to? Or am I looking at that the wrong way? And then also, who are the the big free agents that are that like Bills fans have to watch out for that the Dolphins signed? I think there's a very clear cut answer for one of them, but there, there's I'm sure there's others that you might think of. Sure, the uh, last year, well, last year's a big signing is they, you know, they two years ago they were told everyone said they had the worst roster in the NFL, right? Because they got rid of everyone, and then they had a ton of money. You had to spend some money, and they, and they spent money in hindsight. You probably shouldn't have signed Shaq Lawson to that, but then they didn't move him so much because he was a failure. They moved him because he got beat out by Andrew Van Ginkle. So he lost his spot. So they actually took him and they traded him for. Is Bernard he the dude? Is, is Van Ginkle the dude with the long blonde hair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he I love lost that. that. Yes, yeah, so we lost that role. So they kind of had him. You can't have a backup defensive lineman uh, making 10 million a year. So what they did is they traded him out for Bernardrick McKinney. Don't tell that to the Bills. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So they traded him out to for McKinney, and then McKinney went to a Pro Bowl a couple of years ago. Is he, you know, he's got some limitations in coverage, but he's uh, really, really, really good against the run. And then they didn't have to. He had this huge contract, but because um, because of a trade, all the guaranteed and the, that money got paid by Houston before he comes over. Mm-hmm. And then they actually re-signed him. So he, McKinney's went down. He's cost three million against the cap. So to take a lineman that lost his job, trade him for a former Pro Bowl linebacker at a position of need, uh, I don't think that's a bad move, and I'm not going to knock him on that. Um, the – what's his name uh, from the – why am I drawing a blank? Yeah. The Patriots there. Uh, uh, Van, Van Noy. Noy. Van Noy, the dude that Allen steamrolled and then had the, the fumble that didn't yeah. actually count. Yeah. Yeah. Van Noy, uh, that guy. I don't know what happened there. Van Noy played fairly well, steamroll aside. Um, he played well. He was a captain. He was hurt. Um, he had he filled the stat sheet. He was one of a few linebackers that had like X amount of tackles and sacks and stuff like that. Like he played well. There was obviously something, something was there that they didn't like. That was the only one that was a real head scratcher. They brought in Byron. He didn't Bruce. like the coach. Yeah, I thought well, I heard yeah, that. Yeah. Him and yeah. Well, they know, but that yeah. came out after he got let go. So it was weird because he liked the coach when he signed with him because they know each other from New England, right? Van Noy's best year was with uh, Flores as the defensive coordinator. So he signed there knowing full well who Flores was, but something went down. Um, I don't know whether it was just they liked his production but not enough for the cost. I, I don't, I'm not sure. But either way – Are they are, are they still doing coke in the coaches' uh, film rooms in Miami? <laughs> I think that's no. where the offensive line worries yeah. come into play. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I'm just yeah. wondering. It's a good question. My linemen, Don't get aren't, bad. Good, my linemen aren't very good, but they're always hyped up for some reason. But if, uh, if you were if you were in Miami, come on, you do it, yeah. Dev. Don't don't yeah. lie to us. You know how that guy got caught, right? How he got caught? Uh, no, how? 
Uh, wasn't he just so, screaming, I'm doing coke or something? No, he was doing, uh, he was taking videos of himself doing cocaine and sending it to the prostitute that he sees. And the prostitute Hell thought he yes. was being so she took the video and posted it online. So that's where he came from, a prostitute. <laughs> Can't make it up. That was. I hope. Idea. I really hope he wasn't trying to teach any of those players about how to make good judgment calls. Well, that was like <laughs> that was like three years ago. That was he was there when Adam Gase was there. Uh, that was the old line coach, wasn't it? <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It was the old line coach yeah. from when Gase yeah. was. There. Yeah. So yeah. now they got they got a new guy, new old line coach this year. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't do cocaine, not for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. He's a former player, so I'm sure he's not a stranger to it. But no, uh, probably not. I guess, the last big free agent guy they signed was uh, was Byron Jones, and Byron Jones played well last year. Like he, uh, you know, he came in again. The Dolphins two years ago set the NFL record for like most yards or points given up or something. Like he was abysmal. And then last year uh, they were number one until the infamous fifty six points you guys <laughs> put on in uh, week seventeen. So they, yeah, it was a it was a beatdown, and he got burned in that one too. Uh, uh, Brown beat him for a touchdown. But um, other than that, he played really well. There was a huge difference. Remember the first – so the first game, the whole uh, game plan was they were going to double uh, – they were going to put Byron Jones on, a, on digs, give him some safety help, and let Xavier uh, cover on the other side just one-on-one. And Diggs got uh, – sorry, uh, Diggs ran a little – they collided, and Jones went out. And then Diggs went for 7,000 yards against Noah Ibnogin. <laughs> uh, and – and safety help like it was crazy like it was just a beat down so it was a huge huge thing when he came back like it, it really it makes a difference speaking of x um you know they're doing joint practices with the falcons right now and he's getting yeah. absolutely burnt does that worry you at all i mean he got his big payday he comes in doesn't really do any good does that worry you no you mean he got he gave up one catch to calvin Ridley? <laughs> I, and look, I saw it on Twitter, and I saw yeah, it a lot on Twitter, yeah. which means that it happened more than once. So yeah. um, there, there, I will say there's another corner in the division who got burned in their joint practice that I think is much more worthy of being made fun of, and he would be somebody who's up in New England right now. So I'd, yeah. if you get burned by Calvin Ridley, I'm, I'm actually going to defend this here. Like Calvin Ridley is a damn good receiver. Don't, it's don't, okay to get burnt no. by him in practice once. And it was, it was I, like, I, yeah, I cannot, I can't up. hate on him for that. I'm sorry, I, I can't. can't. He's yeah. a good receiver. It's a one on one drill and on a goal line. So he ran like a six yard in and scored. Toasted. <laughs> I mean, you, like, you and you and Kev got in a fight earlier on in the podcast. Now you want to defend a Dolphins player. I get it. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I'll defend. Hey, I will look. I will defend let's, and I will take shots where I see necessary. Yeah. We still there is still a free hey. agent that we got to talk about. Will yeah, Fuller. Let's yeah. talk that, that is. I think. Will I don't know if there's any other any other free agents that are more important to talk about than him. But uh, he, like he, the what he can you do for the back. Dolphins offense mm-hmm. versus. What he will do, like, is that all going to match up? Are you worried about the injuries? Because, like, he's in, he's injury prone. Jalen Waddle's a little injury. Like, he's coming off of his injury. He's he's had a, a lingering injury. Like, are we worried about the injuries in the Dolphins wide receiver room, most specifically with Will Fuller, but kind of just in general also? The whole room is injury prone. Uh, Parker's injury prone. Yeah. Preston Williams is injury prone. Yeah. Uh, King Grant's injury prone. Alvin Amen. Hearn. Oh, sorry. He's already hurt. He's out for the year. <laughs> uh, Albert Wilson dislocated his hip a couple years yeah. ago. Um, the whole team. There's not the, the healthiest we- receiver we have right now is the guy who broke his ankle in college last year. So, yeah, I mean, Will Dolphins Fuller specifically. Like, what can what can he do for this Dolphins team if he stays healthy? Because yeah, obviously that is a big yeah. if. Well, last year uh, there was – no speed, right? Once Parker got, he missed some games and then he had the nagging hamstring. So he's one of those where he played, but then he'd go out at halftime. You know, it was really annoying. Um, there was no speed, no speed on the team at all, except J- Jakeem Grant. He can't catch a cold. So it was very like, everyone's like, oh, two and only throw short. When the fastest guy in the field is the tight end, yeah, that's what's going to happen. So they decided this year, regardless of whether it's Tua or, hey, I'm, I'm Team Deshaun, but whatever, right? Depending on whoever's lined up, they've decided they want to add some speed. So they made a, a concerted effort to get some fast guys. So it's going to be interesting now, regardless of whether you throw deep, regardless of whether you throw short and hope for run after the catch. Will Fuller 
played really, really well last year for, for the uh, Houston. He was not just the deep threat guy anymore. He was actually really, uh, he was on pace for like 1,300 yards until he got caught with a little bit of, a little couple of needles, I guess. And then, uh, but it, you know, hey, as long as I've seen the program, if you clean out the urine like Latimer, you're good to go. So um, I like him on a team, obviously. Having, having some guys, it's going to, having Will Fuller and Jalen Waddell, is should change the way defenses play because regardless of whether two is a bum or not, he's still an NFL quarterback. And if you're going to play a lot of like when new England plays a lot of um, like that cover zero, right. It's hard to play cover zero when you have these two guys that are like lightning fast. Like these are four, three, four, two guys that are not just like practice squad four threes. Like, well, Waddle hasn't proved anything yet, but he looks pretty good. And and Fuller's made a career of catching long touchdowns. So you should see but uh, more too high safety looks. And if you see more too high safety looks, then that should open up theoretically more room for Gesicki and Parker to work underneath. Oh, um, love Gisicki. So that's that's the theory, right? The theory is having um, these two blazers that forces the the safeties to step back. Now, is this going to matter that much against the Bills? No, because you guys play that cover three. You're already back. You're very much keep it in front of you and uh, rally a tackle, right? So it won't pay as much dividends against you guys, unfortunately for me. But teams like New England in that, teams that are man heavy, uh, the Ravens and these type of teams, having you know Parker, Gesicki, Waddle, Fuller, uh, Preston Williams and Albert Wilson to a degree, you know, as your fifth, sixth guy, um, you have some guys now that can actually can actually beat guys man on man and have some speed and, and, and maybe make some big plays so that the Miami offense doesn't always have to go 15 plays to, to score a touchdown. So I, yeah. I can see, to answer your question, if Will Fuller can stay on the field, which is a big, big if, um, I think him and Waddle together will, re- even if they don't produce themselves, are still going to have a direct impact on the offense because of how defenses are going to have to play to, to try and contain their speed. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you kind of threw it in there too because I was going to say at the end, like I, the, as much as I really like the way the Dolphins are building out this wide receiver room, it's definitely going to be more – like their speed and everything is going to matter more against – the New England's and Baltimore and teams like that than the Bills. Like it's it's going to definitely matter against the Bills. Speed kills. It doesn't matter what type of defense you play against, but it's going to hurt the Bills less, most likely, than it would hurt a team that plays that that just strict man to man cover zero type of defense. Um, so let's move on to the draft picks. Uh, are there any? We I mean we mentioned Jalen Phillips already. We mentioned Waddle. Are there any under the radar? draft picks that you would want that you think could make an impact right away outside of like the main guys that are drafted at the top uh javon holland so the dolphins let bobby mckean go and they drafted javon holland they tried to put him on second team and he just he's already first team he's already first team uh and he has something like five turnovers in his last five practices impressive uh, and, uh that was coming into this week. Um, he's making plays like crazy. I was not a huge fan of the pick. Um, I think there's some bad footage of me flipping out, but uh, <laughs> I wanted, uh, I forget his name now, the, the, uh, the center fielder guy, Morig, Trayvon Morig. But um, from all in accounts, Holland is the Devin McCourty type player that Flores has always wanted this kind of free safety guy with corner ability that can come up and cover the slot uh, when need be. Um, I think he will, I think he might end up being Miami's best rookie this year. I think Ooh. that, I think that between Parker, you know, like when you talk Waddle between Fuller Parker and Gesicki and, you know, the check downs to the running backs, by, uh, I don't know how much room there's going to be, let you know for Waddle to put up huge numbers unless someone gets significantly injured and he has to play like a, a crap ton of snaps. I think Jalen Phillips um, has a good chance to rack up a bunch of sacks just because of Miami's scheme where they do a good job of with their blitzing to get him on one on one and maybe get him some free runs to the quarterback. But I think the most productive rookie is going to be Javon Holland. 
Okay. Would it be fair to say that the best position group is the corners and then the worst position group is the offensive line just as a whole? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think okay. I, I was considering like the I think the the wide receivers if they are healthy all year, if they had a year together, they could potentially make an argument for being up there as the best wide res- or the best uh, position group just because they are really deep. But I mean, having an All Pro on one side and then I, I don't is Byron Jones has he made a Pro Bowl? He's I actually don't couple, know. He's made a couple. Pro Bowls. He has. Okay. All right. Uh, so I mean, having those two guys. It, like that is that is any defense's dream to have two corners of their caliber. I really like um, Eric Rowe too. He's kind of underrated at strong safety. He's not uh, he's not Jordan Poyer against the run. That guy's awesome, right? But Rowe is exceptional at covering tight ends. Like he's really good at it. And in this uh, this day and age, most teams have those weapons at tight end you don't see it much in the east but like in the other divisions well actually new england's got two of them now but like when you have these guys hey hey put some respect on my man dawson knox before I'm you not saying that. i'm just we're talking like you. Elite. we're talking elite I, guys, right? okay yeah, so, so okay talking, <laughs> i don't know if either of them are put elite some, re- yet, put put some respect can, on my that's boy's a different name. that's a different conversation yeah, but anyways but i'm saying like having that and then I really like we signed um, Justin Coleman to play in the slot yeah, this year yeah. because you guys have been destroying Nick Needham inside the last <laughs> four games, like destroying him. It was him that couldn't even cover Isaiah McKenzie and gave up like yeah, a long yeah. It's like, oh, and he's not even bomb. In the, <laughs> he's not even in the frame. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the first game you guys played against, like I give you know the Bills a lot of credit, especially your offensive scheme. Mike, yeah, you better. In the first game you guys played, like we played you pretty well. We were actually winning in the fourth. Like it was a, it was a good game, but I was screaming at the at the thing. Right, I was like, I j- all I kept seeing was I just want to see when your receivers catch a ball. I just want to see a teal shirt in the print. I don't even need him to cover him <laughs> anymore. I just want to see him in the picture. And you and and the way the beatdown you put on Nick Needham for the last like two years, like get him out of there. So. Is Justin? Is Coleman, he okay? Like, yeah, he's a bum. But uh, <laughs> he was like that feel-good story a couple of years ago because he was an undrafted, you know, UDFA, and you can't, kind of came out of nowhere. And he played okay, and he played a couple of plays. He's like the guy that, like, if he's your, is he Rudy? Know, would, yeah. Yes. Yes. He's, he's Rudy. Guy. He's okay. like the try-hard, no athletics, but he's like scrappy. You know. Um, he's that guy. So, like, if he's your fifth, fourth, or fifth corner, it's not bad. But he, there's no way he should be on the field because Cole Beasley <laughs> and then Mackenzie came in and everyone just tore him up. So it'll be, I think, an underrated signing that we have is Justin Coleman, who's who's had several years, not last year so much, but who did have a good year with the Lions. But before that, with Seattle and New England, as one of the better nickel corners, um, and we signed him for dirt cheap. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, but to get back to your original point, uh, yeah, the offensive line is definitely the only reason I hesitated is because the running backs could be worse, but those are our two worst positions, right? Offensive line and running back, and then definitely secondary. And I would say defensive line. I think our defensive line is going to be very, very strong this year. Um, I think that's our two best positions. I mean, the, the defense, you go every single level. The defense is very good for Miami. Like there's, there's no way to question that. The offense, I, I think there's mu- a couple more points of question, but it doesn't matter what you could talk linebackers. Like you guys have really good linebackers. Like it's every single level, you guys are really solid on defense. So let's. I have one more question, then I want to go to your questions about the Bills, and then we'll get your prediction for the season. Um, what what scares you most about the Bills going into this year? Like, is there something that does scare you about like the bills and what they could do this season in terms of how they match up with the dolphins. Um, other than Josh Allen, but like, um, Allen is like the perfect quarterback to play against Miami's defense because Miami's defense is predicated on getting pressure quickly, having corners that can maintain man coverage for, you know, 
uh, you can only cover for so long in the NFL and getting forcing turnovers. And while Allen, you know, he, he, he can turn the ball over, he just eludes the pressure. He always extends the play. And you have wide receivers that are dynamic enough that even they're going to get separation. It doesn't matter how good your corners are. If Allen's back there for five seconds, no one's covering that, especially guys like Diggs and Beasley and that. Like, they're too talented to cover that ball. So um, it's like Miami spent all this time building a roster to compete with New England. And then right when we kind of got some pieces to do to do that, New England shits to bed, loses Tom Brady, and Allen comes out of nowhere. And now it's like, uh oh, um, our defense is really bad against the uh, against Allen. It always has been, right? Even when Allen um, uh, wasn't was wasn't as good, yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when he was struggling as a rookie and stuff, you know, he was still playing well against uh, Miami. Um, it's just that's what frightens me the most that your your wideouts like are, are talented, but you know. I wouldn't be too concerned if you had Nate Peterman or someone back there. Your uh, Rico's not going to like that shot. Your offensive line's okay. You know, um, it's good. Bobby enough. Hart for president. Yeah. Oh, and I saw you got <laughs> Jamil Douglas too. I the Jamil Douglas is such a bum. Oh, we had him Miami drafted. Um, get rid of him. But, do you uh, do you have any fear that and uh, like a little math equation here? Um, Josh Uh-oh. Allen to the Dolphins equals Tom Brady to the Bills. Do you have any fear that that could end up being true long term? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> that was that was a. <laughs> I've been on. I've been on. The Canadian like, came out big there. Yeah. Like I've been oh, on. Yeah. Record. I was really hard on Allen his first couple of years, but all last year I was kept saying he played exceptionally well. He's playing exceptionally well. Uh, there was no more like butts, right? Like first year it was brutal. Uh, second year he was he was starting to get a bit better, but he had like one of the historically bad deep ball passing season. And then th- this year he was just uh, it was unbelievable, right? It was it was crazy. And if he plays like that moving forward, then absolutely. Um, ironically, Miami actually d- did of every team did the best against Tom Brady. So in um, but. Uh, in this case, yeah, I know you guys struggled really bad with Brady. Um, so I can see that happening. Like my, I was desperately wishing that, uh, what's his name there? Uh, your offensive coordinator was gone. I, 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 I would have loved it if he went to the chargers. I was devastated. We all thought, when we all thought he was over, going. over, under, <clears throat> over, under, how many times do you think, we see Jacoby Brissett, barring no injuries to Tua. Um, I'm going to set the bar at three games. Over, under, how many times do you think we see him this year? Uh, under. I, you're you're going to say under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that, that is- if, if Tua doesn't get hurt, I don't think you'll see Brissett unless it's like 45-0 to zero or, or like an but, obvious situation where a – well, let me, Casey, let me I thought you said we were going to be done with the two. No, I, I just – that was my only I'm question. I'm going to hold back um, here. Yeah. So I'm going to paint you a scenario, yeah. right? And you tell me if we see Jacoby Brissett or not. Um, you've won 10 games or you've won nine. Um, it's – you win this game, you get into the playoffs. Um, two is that quarterback in the first half, right? Halftime hits. Are you bringing in Jacoby Brissett to get you to the playoffs or not? I don't think so. I think it's a different scenario with Fitzpatrick because Fitzpatrick was the starting quarterback for like a year and a half. He had that um, trust and faith from the coaching staff that they knew he was going to do it. Jacoby Brissett's like a stranger, right? So unless he's <laughs> played, a, unless Tua got hurt and he played like six or seven games, they're not going to they're not going to put him in. Um, plus, it's Brissett. You know, Fitzpatrick's that he's that weirdo where. He's either going to throw you four picks or he's going to throw you four touchdowns. He's either going to lose you the game or he's going to throw like a, a game winning pass with his helmet being yanked to the side against the Colts. There's like, he's that guy where if you're down in the fourth, he's going to either dig you out of the hole or he's going to do like he, the other time when he went in against Denver and he threw the game losing interception in the end zone. But um, Brissett's not like that. I, I think a lot of, the crap that gets given to Tua should also be considered the fact of what Fitzpatrick did for that team, 
how he was the starter and the trust they had in him. I can't see that with, I could be wrong, but I can't see that with Brissett and it's year two now. If, if they're going to pull to it this year for that, again, we're not talking like if they're getting schlacked and it's, fun. yeah, I know it's close game. No, it's, it's close, close game. If they pull him a close game this year, then, then just, then, you know, immediately get rid of him, go all in yeah. for Deshaun Watson. Right. Um, well, if, if he's if gotta, he's still, still league, league. I'm just barring I'm just, barring <laughs> legal throwing, barring legal. throwing out a throwing out a scam, right? So um, um, yeah, but I, I do think I think those are very different situations, though. Like you like you laid out. I I as much as I am not a fan of Tua, I don't even think that that's going to happen this year because it's it, you don't throw I, a guy who doesn't play all year in at the end like that. That would that would be like end of career type of thing almost. If if yeah. you're like, oh, two has been our starter all year, but we need a win. Let's go to our backup Brissett. Like that's a it's a totally different situation this year than it was last year. As much as I don't believe in him, like, I, it's just not the same. I have one last question for you, Kev. Um, I don't get to talk to you as much as I'd like, um, and it, it breaks my heart to be honest with you. But I do know for a fact that you are an avid listener of this show, of Nap Knows Buffalo, catches every Friday. I just have to ask you this question. I know you've studied, you've prepared for this question, and you're ready for this question. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to answer with no hesitation. No hesitation. I love it. Do you think I could take a Tiger 1v1 in a fight if I had, say, a dagger, gladiator style? Do you think I could take a Tiger? Well, well, I was going to answer immediately, but then you threw that loophole of the dagger in. It's got to be a dagger. Um, might be even more certain of something now. So okay, go ahead. I guess I would have to definitely say that, you know, hand to hand, it's a toss up. But if we're going to throw a dagger into the thing, I think you'd come out victorious. Thank this you. is we're, yeah. we're done here. We're done here. <laughs> it's over. It's over. If the tiger <laughs> gets claws, I get a weapon too. If the tiger well, is declawed, if a tiger is declawed, then. No, I won't have the dagger. But if the tiger comes out and he has his little claws, then yes, I'm gonna have a dagger. Obviously, don't be dumb. I'm not crazy. All right, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> season predictions. What do you think the Dolphins no, 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 are gonna no. do this year? We'll, we'll end with no, the no, season I'm sorry. predictions. We'll I'm end sorry. with the season I'm... predictions. What what questions do you have for us about the Bills? Oh um, so do you think that yes. uh, the unsettling or uncertainty at corner two is going to uh, impact the team at all. Do you want this Casey or do you want me to answer it? Um, We can both go. I'm sure we have different yeah, reasons. Yeah, um, yeah you, go, my, you go first then. Uh, my biggest reason, I'm going to say no. I don't think so. Um, and I think it's because our front seven steps up. I think that's important. Um, so, yeah, that, that's my only reason. Is, is Dane Jackson going to be able to cover, you know, for a long time, probably not, right? But if we have just front seven, Dane Jackson, Jackson is the starter. I'm sorry, I was thinking it, this today on Twitter. Greg was talking about Dane Jackson not making the not making the roster. Levi Wallace, <laughs> Levi Wallace is not going to um, not going to cover for a very long time. I just really think our front seven steps up, and that gives the back half of the football team, you know, not having to cover for a long time. So I don't see it being an issue. So I I think it's. It's dependent <laughs> on Jackson. opponent. Um, yeah, it, where where is all that Dane Jackson all pro talk now? Um, but so I, I I like Levi Wallace. I actually think he's better than a lot of Bills fans give him credit for, just because Bills fans are like, oh, it's it's not Trey White on the other side. Also, he's not any sort of good whatsoever. Levi Wallace has a ton of limitations. Obviously, we know that he's going to get targeted a lot. We know that. I think he's going to be able to hold up most of the time. But I am I'm definitely nervous if he starts being like they're going at Levi Wallace every single play. I'm nervous about that if teams decide to do that. But if if he's Miami able to if the, done that, right? Yes, yeah, he and that's I mean that's how Miami got back in the game the first the first game yeah, last and, last year. Yeah. And, um while you guys have won every basically every game since I think since we no, since Allen's rookie year. That's right. The year before we swept you with the Jai and then we won the next one. It was five and one because Allen had the yeah Allen had the, the should have been touchdown to Clay, but Clay yeah yeah, yeah though we all yeah that, yeah yeah Xavier Howard picked him off twice. So um, yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, but other than that, like, it's funny because almost every year there's one close game and then one shellacking. Right? Mm-hmm. But in all of this, it's weird because Miami's been a pitiful offensive team, but has actually been one of the few guys or a few teams to move the ball against your defense. So my second question would be like, I have no understanding of why this is other than maybe something about struggle. Like you guess you kind of struggle a bit against tight ends or something. And Gusecki plays well, but why are we able to uh, perform better against your defense than most teams? Because other than that, you guys are like lights out defense every year. I, I think last year was a very different situation than years before. I don't know what type of defense we're going to see this year. We actually talked about this a little bit last week about like I, I mentioned if the Bills have their 2019 defense this year, I have no worries whatsoever. Like I I have extremely high expectations. If it's last year's defense, they really struggled in the middle of the field. I have a couple of worries here and there, but overall, like still the Bills should be really, really good. But last year, like Edmonds was way out of whack. Like he didn't play the way he had played the two previous years. Milano was hurt, so he was he wasn't playing like himself for most of the year. And then you go into like they're also playing off of Ed Oliver was playing out of position where he wasn't able to be that pass rushing defensive tackle up the middle like McDermott likes to have. They didn't have Star being that like hold two blockers type of guy like. There was a lot different about the defense last year that gave Gasecki. I mean, he's he's extremely good. He worries me a lot no matter what. But he had even more opportunities last year because the Bills were so weak in the middle of the field. So I, I don't really know what the reason would have been before last year. But I know last year, like being able to move the ball up the middle of the field against the Bills defense was the clear-cut answer of like how do we beat the Bills. And Gasecki is just like the perfect guy to do it. So – the Dolphins had I love, I love that him. advantage. Yeah, he is. I don't. I don't like that he's on the Dolphins. I really don't like it because I like him a lot. He's, he's so a great good. player, and I don't so want to see him twice a year. Okay. So I, I, I honestly think Gasecki is a big part of why the Dolphins last year, more specifically, obviously the first game, but he's a big reason we, why they were able to do that. We we should have honestly probably had uh, Medkevich in there. Um, at linebacker because he is lights out, really good linebacker. So, yeah, for sure. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah, you speechless there. I liked. Uh, I actually didn't mind. I remember the first Miami game. You had uh, Dotson came in. He played really well. Um, Dotson, yeah, I think that, I think the really linebacker good. depth yeah. this year is going to be better than last year. With whether it's Dotson, uh, Andre Smith was playing really well. I know it's preseason, yeah. so let's not overreact, but. He was playing well. He kind of played a little bit better towards the end of the season. I know when he had his opportunities, but I think the depth this year is a little bit better at linebacker too. Medikevich almost took a, uh, almost had a pick six against Jared Goff. So nice. Just absolutely outstanding. Great, great quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Do you have, do you have any other questions before we do predictions? Yeah. Now, uh, he's calling you out. Yeah, to his ceiling versus or above or worse than Jared Goff. Oh, to his, I think to his ceiling is above Jared Goff's. I, I don't th- so Jared Goff's success was more because of a his coach. A lot than because of hate. Of hate. A lot I, like, of hate I don't, for Jared Goff. I, I really do think hate. Jared Goff's success was more because of McVay than it was because of Jared Goff. I, I think Tua can be Tua no matter what offense he's in, no matter what coordinator he has. I don't think his ceiling is going to be like this ultimate, like he's going to carry a team to a Super Bowl. I think he can be on a Super Bowl team if every all the other pieces are in place. But I think his I think his ceiling is probably still higher because he has more that he can do. He like he has that extra aspect to his game of being a mobile quarterback where and golf is not like this standstill can't move quarterback, but two is more mobile than him. He he has that extra ability to his game. That if I had to pick one of them, I'm picking Tua. Okay, I got one last question. Um, okay, go ahead, ask it. What's the feeling in your stomach <laughs> if you wake up tomorrow and Miami has traded for Deshaun Watson? Don't care. Cool. Is what he going to play this season? 
What a it, dumb I mean, it completely question. depends. I'm just if curious. he's gonna if he's <laughs> gonna play this season, yeah, then I think there's legitimate competition potentially for like the 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 potential that the Dolphins are going to actually be able to fight for that number one seed or number one spot in the AFC East much higher if Deshaun Watson is there. Like no I doubt mean, about it. I use that just as a barometer of, of how you guys consider the rest of Miami's roster, right? Where if you took, because Bill's focus is 110% on Tua. So if you took Tua off and you put like a good quarterback on, do you think the rest of the team is good? And they were, just, or were they just lucky to win 10 games? Like that, that's kind of where I'm going with that. So I just yeah. pulled out the, the, the one focal point and put in like a good player. Where do you like, if they had a, a quarterback of that caliber, do, can they challenge the bills in your mind? I, I still have the offensive line concerns, but obviously we talked about this. Like mm-hmm. it, the the Bills' defensive line wasn't as good as we wanted them to be last year. But I, I still have the offensive line concerns, even if Deshaun Watson is in there. He's going to make more of whatever situation he's in than Tua will. So they will be better. He would probably win them an extra like two or three games than Tua would win just because he is that much better than Tua. So I would. it, it definitely makes me more nervous. But I think the Bills having the experience they have as a team and the togetherness because they're returning so many players, I think that helps out a lot where I still am confident the Bills win the East. But it would be a much, much tighter race if Deshaun Watson is there because the Dolphins, by all accounts, like they have a good roster. Like I, By no means do I want anyone to think that I'm like trashing <laughs> the Dolphins' roster. I, I think the Dolphins have done a very good job of building out a roster despite having a couple of spots here and there that could definitely still be improved overall, like where the team was two or three years ago, as opposed to where they are now, completely different direction. I'm on record saying that I love the jets um, in for a future. Um, then I like Miami and I'm I not going to take that, that back. I've also yeah, said I'm that, not gonna but take that, that doesn't change what I, I said just now. Well, well, and and I, I want to finish right because I think the reason why I like the Jets as far as a future opponent and what's to come in the future, um, as far as them kind of challenging the Bills, um, it comes down to the quarterback, right? I like Zach Wilson more than I like Tua, right? So if Tua is the um, quarterback of the future for Miami, I'm not as worried, but. In your scenario, if you take somebody else and you take in a really, really, really good quarterback, by all accounts, um, a Deshaun Watson type generational talent at quarterback, then it kind of like changes the whole atmosphere, right? Because then at that point, you're like, well, you know, a good quarterback can really, really help the team. So that, that absolutely changes everything if you have, you know, really good quarterback. And that's not to say Tua can't transform into that generational, really good quarterback. It's just at this point, I'm on, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm on record of saying saying that I think Zach Wilson. Of course, you didn't even bring it up, but I, I'm on record saying I think Zach Wilson and the Jets are going to you know push Buffalo before Miami does. I mean, I don't think they're going to push Buffalo before Miami does because I think Miami <laughs> is much closer this year. But I this I sure. said this last week too. I think long term the Jets are probably setting themselves up a little bit better because. They're, they're, I, we don't have to get into all of it, but I, I also like the Jets a little bit more long term. But I also, I, I like the Dolphins better than the Patriots long term right now. Like I, I, I'm just, I, I will say this: I'm very happy that we're in a place where I think we can finally be, like, actually hopeful that the Patriots are probably going to be the bottom feeder of the AFC East for X amount of years, however long. Like they might not be that this year. But we're heading in that direction because we don't know what they have at quarterback. We don't know what like they have to. Yes, complete. we do. We know who's that quarterback. The Mac Attack. That's yes, Mac Attack. Yeah. That's yeah. that investment banker walk. No, for uh, sure. You you guys are the only team in the division with a with a solid quarterback situation. So in the NFL, that obviously let's go, Jake Fromm. That's why you guys are so <laughs> confident, right? So and I don't blame you. Yeah, like I. Uh, I traded Jake Fromm in fantasy uh, to somebody for Baker Mayfield, uh, just a straight up one for one swap, and he accepted it. So I'm not saying that I'm the best GM there ever was, but come on now. I, I can't believe that happened. 
I, the, the, the things people let you get away with. <laughs> all right. Um, Kevin, let's, season let's, get our, let's get our season predictions, and that's how we'll wrap this all up. Um, Nine and let's eight. Get a prediction against the Bills, and then a prediction just for the full season. Uh, you mean Miami's? Yeah, Miami's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Miami. Uh, probably 0-2 against the Bills. Although yep, I will so be at, two. I will be at the game on Halloween, so that would be really nice. Let's um, go. But, uh, oh, yeah, there's 17 games now, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really makes you think now, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like like that, that extra game, it, it shouldn't so throw weird. you off, but it throws yeah. you off a lot. Somewhere between 10 and 7 and 11 and 6. I'll go with 10 and 7. Okay. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. I think you guys are 13 and 4. That, I think that was the prediction that I made. I think. Oh, one last question: Who gets more okay, sacks? Word. Who gets more sacks, Greg Russo or Dylan Phillips? I'll oh leave this God. for you, Casey, because you now you got to pick because you were you were going hard for Jalen Phillips before, and then I you, love Jalen Phillips. You got to you got to really do. pick your stance now. I, I don't know if are you going to be a homer. This, I think I think. I think Kyle knows this, but the reason why, and I think Kevin, I think you know this as well. The reason why I started like looking at Miami was because of Greg Russo, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm watching it on my big screen. I listen to music while I was watching the games and the film and all that good stuff. Um, and I'm like, dude, this guy is badass. And then I start like researching a little bit more into it and find out it's Jalen Phillips and it's not Gregory Russo because Gregory Russo took a year off. Right. Um, so that's, that's what made me fall in love with Jalen Phillips. I'm sitting here like, God, Russo is so fucking awesome. Right. Um, and then it just turned out to be, it turned out to be Phillips. Um, but I, I like Russo as well. It's going to be hard. I, I personally believe Jalen Phillips will get more sacks. And I think that because Jalen Phillips is going to see the field more than than Russo will. I know that Russo had a really great first preseason game, but I don't believe he's starting. Um, I, th- I think we kind of see the AJ Epinesa route with him, where it, it takes a little bit for him to you know see the field. And I'm not saying it's going to take forever for him to see the field. I just think that Jalen Phillips is going to be on the field right away, um, and he's going to get more sacks this year. Yeah, I. I- kind of think that too i I don't really know what jalen phillips has been doing in camp or what he did i haven't haven't paid attention to that whatsoever i cry myself to sleep but i i just don't see russo even if he plays a lot of snaps as a rookie he's still in a six-man defensive end rotation most likely so it's going to like he's gonna have to he's gonna have to really impress to play enough snaps to i think probably i mean he would have to probably somewhere around like Eight is probably the number where one of them is going to have the most at that point between six and eight, I think. And if, if Rousseau gets six sacks this year, even like that's we're, a huge we're, success. We're that, over the so, moon with that. So that, would, that would yeah. Be so I think, I think Phillips probably wins out of the two of them for just sack total this year. Uh, Phillips gets you double digit sacks this year. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a no, bold he does. Prediction. I mean, that's, that's, that's not bold. That's, that's just, that's, that's yeah. defensive rookie of the year then. I mean, that's just the God honest truth at the end of the day. Well, that's what that gotta, is. The cold hard facts. That's the uh, – Sure, the sure, sure. I am so sick. The whole Miami no. season. He's no, gonna stay no, you will not get me to defend him on this platform. Oh, I love it. Is this I'm, the year I, you guys I, I, see an injury? Like you haven't lost a, you haven't lost a single meaningful player to a season-ending injury – in three years, I've never seen anything like it. No one talks about it, and I don't understand it. You I don't know why you just brought it up. And so that, that's how we're going to end the show right there. Uh, let me get a Go Bills. Oh, Go Bills. You know, this is the last time uh, – <laughs> first time we talked was last year I did this Dolphins preview. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I actually – I actually – I want a little bit of credit here. I actually mm-hmm. predicted that the Dolphins were going to finish second in the AFC East and they were going to push for a wild card spot. I don't remember if they said they were going to get it or not, but I, I was the one last year on that episode saying that the Dolphins are a team to look out for. Yeah, so I, I just go I, Bills. I want, I want a little credit there. 
<laughs> it was good. And then that one guy, oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, you can end the show. I'll talk to you about it. <laughs> right. yeah. Let's let me get a go bills. Oh, go bills. Go bills. Go bills. Go bills.